there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to paint some chives in watercolor and I'm using this fun little watercolor palette from Artsy. It's one of the new novelty palettes uh, that has the same paint as the fan style palettes that I've reviewed in the past. This one does have a nicer mixing area, meaning it's larger, and it uh, does have a variety of 60 colors. I will only be using a handful of colors for this example. And I'm gonna be using the water brushes that came in that kit. As you can see, I've laid three little stalks of chives on a scrap paper on my work surface, and I'm using a tall, skinny notebook. And this is actually a watercolor uh, handbook sketchbook. It's by the Handbook Company. Um, it looks a lot like the Arteza sketchbooks, and I used to think the paper was more textured than the Arteza ones, but as I'm using it today, it feels about the same. So maybe it's the same paper. I'm not sure. I used to think that they were quite different, but um, just using it today makes me, they feel a little more similar than I remember. But anyway, I'm starting off with kind of like a, a kind of green gold color and then I'm adding a darker green at the edges and letting it spread just to give it a little bit of a uh, kind of a round feeling to the stock because chives have kind of like a tubular or a cylindrical um, thick uh, stock. If you've ever chopped up chives to use in a recipe, then I'm sure you're familiar with what I'm talking about. And then I'm getting that little bit of flair going into the, um, the flower itself, and I'm painting on that kind of sheath that's around the bud. And I just basically mixed the yellow green with some of the purple that I intend to use for the chives to make this kind of neutralized uh, brownish peach color to, um, uh, to paint that anyway. And before I put the uh, the main flower spiky bits in, I decided I would go and work on another flower to give that a chance to dry. And I'm doing just the closed bud. So there you can see that sheathy part, how it just kind of um, encapsulates all those little flower petals until it blooms. Uh, I thought it'd be really pretty to paint these chives today because I was walking in the backyard and noticing that um, uh, that almost every little stalk of chives had a little flower on it and they were in different um, different stages of opening up. So I thought it'd be cool to have three different stages of opening up. One that's pretty well open, one that's half open, and one that's still closed. And there's a lot of greens in this set. So I decided to use a more of a, like a phthalo green there. Actually, you know what I did? I think I took that uh, one of the brighter greens and mixed it with some Prussian blue to darken it even more and kind of get that uh, get that true color because the other the other stocks a little too light at this point and I will have to go in and adjust it but that's the fun thing about just kind of painting your sketchbook without a sketch you know just just go right in with the paint charge right in with it and um, and see what you can do I didn't do any pencil sketching beforehand um, oftentimes if I'm working in my watercolor sketchbook outdoors I don't do a pencil sketch I just jump right in with the paints and I thought it would be fun to approach that in this way um, at my desk just like I would if I was outside. Now I'm doing a voiceover for this because I honestly thought it would take me longer than I did. This didn't take all that long to paint and um, it just kind of goes to show you that, um, that you have time to paint in your day. All you need is a few extra minutes and just your supplies to be handy. So a thing that I did like about this kit is that it had, well the, the paints, the paints good. I like these uh, fan type palettes. I believe the parent company that, that manufactures these type of pa palettes are the superior company and I do think they make good paint. Um, the thing that is really nice about this is you have everything you need really uh, ready to go. Now this kit didn't come with paper, but I thought this sketchbook was just about the same width as that um, as that little novelty palette when it's folded up, so I thought it'd be great just to kind of stack those together. Sadly, it wouldn't fit in the velvet case that came with the palette, because that would have just been perfection if that worked out, but um, but that's all right. There's also little tins of postcards you could buy that would be another good on-the-go type of painting thing, and then you could actually mail it off if you wanted to, which I think would be fun. Actually, I think it'd be fun if you were like a... Um, uh, someone who does urban sketching or even plein air painting to get a box of those postcards and paint during your travels and mail them to yourself. And I think that'd be so cool because then you'd have the postmark of wherever you painted it because you just drop it in a um, like a mailbox wherever you are and then you'd get that postmark on it when it came back to you. I think that'd be a, just such a fun idea. So here what I'm doing is I am using a fine tip black pen and I am just outlining. Now this is a waterproof pen, it's a pit artist pen, but since I'm doing this after the fact, you could really use any like black gel pen or black fine tip felt pen, whatever you had, honestly. So if you got some black pens, you wanna try this technique, but you're afraid they're not waterproof, just do them last. Now that said, I wanna make sure that I stress the fact that your paper needs to be dry. If your paint is at all damp, when you're doing this, you could ruin your pen. I know microns are famous for um, just, 
just stopping. If you go over any sort of damp paper whatsoever, your Micron is gonna be toast. So just make sure that paper is dry. I actually took my heat tool and I dried it before I did this because I have ruined Microns in the past and they're not that, I mean, they're not that expensive, but they're not cheap. So, um, so you don't want that to happen. And then I thought it'd be fun just to do some uh, printing on here. So I printed the word chives with my neatest penmanship. My penmanship is not good. That's why you don't see like brush lettering or anything like that on my channel because for whatever reason my penmanship did not progress past the third grade um but i just i can print all right so i printed the word chives and now just for a little bit of extra dimension i'm going in with some colored pencils i like to use colored pencils as my last step because um watercolor is not going to stick on top of the colored pencil and also your pen is going to skip over the colored pencil and you might actually end up picking up some wax on the tip of your pen and it could uh kind of clog the nib a bit so i I use my traditional colored pencils last. I'll use a color race sometimes for initial sketching because they're not very waxy and I'm not filling in a lot of color. But here I'm using my Prismacolors to actually deepen the shadows, add some highlights because they are a more opaque pencil and just overall add, provide a little more richness to the sketch than I would have if I just used uh, watercolor. But you know, hey, you can do whatever you wanna do. If you're out sketching in the garden, you probably aren't gonna have your colored pencils with you. Or maybe you just have a, a little uh, selection of colors. Whatever you wanna do is fine. I don't think you necessarily have to add the colored pencil to this. I think it looked fine without it, but I do prefer having that little extra, um, that little extra touch of, I, I don't know, body, I guess, would be the, would be the, um, would be the word. It just seems to give it a little more volume and depth when I put the colored pencil on, but. You can do whatever you want to do. Now, of course, you could create that sort of uh, volume and depth with plain watercolor. It would just take longer, you know? And I just wanted this to be a sketch. I wasn't too invested in this. I've just actually, I have a lot of started sketchbooks in my collection, and I would really love to work through and finish a bunch of those sketchbooks this summer, just kind of doing stuff that isn't so precious because um, sometimes I just put way too much pressure on my drawings and you know saying this is going to be good i'm putting this on online and it's going to be good it's going to be perfect it's going to be great it's going to make people want to watch my channel and that's just way too much pressure and i'm kind of i'm kind of over it so um so i just want to fill up some sketchbooks with some fun looser sketches and see what happens because i have been scraping the bottom of the bear creativity barrel i feel like for the for the last couple of years i feel like i need to fill that barrel up and i think the only way to do that is just to play and to draw what i want to draw and to just practice and uh, fill those sketchbooks with non-consequential artwork um so if you're feeling that way please just just create create for you and uh and try to enjoy it and i'm sure you will once you get going thank you so much for watching please give me a thumbs up before you go and until next time happy crafting